Hello everybody, it's Sarah. Today I wanted to tackle the question of whether or not animal justice is social justice and how they may be one and the same. I didn't always have much of an opinion on animal justice as it relates to social justice. It wasn't until I decided to go fully plant-based and take veganism more seriously that I started to see that this was the missing piece to my social justice. This wasn't an immediate connection, however. I found myself stuck arguing animal justice or social justice, and not just animal justice and social justice, or as social justice. I credit this to the fact that I find mainstream vegan animal activism to be lacking in its intersectionality. I think that this is because their activism will use other oppressed groups as an object to make their point, rather than trying to find allyship with the other oppressed groups and dismantle the system of oppressions that they share together. Now that I've found some great work and have been starting to make the connections that I've been searching for, I believe that animal justice is social justice. I believe that speciesism, a term that it took me 25 years to learn, is just as important to challenge as racism, sexism, ableism, ageism, classism, and other forms of oppression. In case you are also unfamiliar with the term speciesism, it basically is the idea that human animal lives are valued over non-human animal lives in our society. Animal oppression, like other forms of oppression, doesn't exist in a bubble, and there are many overlaps between animal oppression and other forms of oppression. I'm going to focus on sexism, racism, and ableism to highlight what I mean. One thing sexism likes to challenge is the, the role of the female in society is for reproduction, and that females who can't reproduce or choose not to reproduce are no less valuable in society than those who choose to. Female non-human animals in the farming industry are only as valuable as their ability to reproduce. When female animals are no longer able to reproduce, they are no longer useful to farms and are often sent to slaughterhouses. The frequency with which the farming industry makes female non-human animals reproduce causes them to be killed often years before they would have died had they lived their lives free of human manipulations. Male animals are also affected by sexism. For example, baby male calves of milk cows are killed early for veal, and male chicks of egg-laying hens are discarded or ground up alive, as they are deemed useless to the farm industry. Racism is another issue that is entwined with speciesism. Historically and in present day, black people are compared to animals, specifically primates. White people made arguments that black people were evolutionarily inferior to white people and were more similar to primates than to humans. This comparison was used to justify the torture, enslavement, and violence against black people. We even went so far as to argue that black people were unable to experience pain to justify unethical, painful experiences performed on them, just as we continue to justify with non-human animals today. Another intersection that I want to speak about is ableism and speciesism. Ableism determines which bodies are valuable to society and which are disposable, subhuman, or objectifiable. Disabled, non-human animal bodies are often seen as useless and not of value to farmers and are often discarded and deemed useless to the farm industry. This mirrors our treatment to human animals who are disabled and are not expected to or seen as capable of meeting their full potential. Before moving on, I also wanted to point out that we often use animal names to put down other people and more specifically other marginalized identities. Whale, pig, cow, or elephant, for example, are used to refer to fat people, while bitch, catty, batty, bird, and cow are often used to put down women. And finally, ape, monkey, and other primate names are often used to put down black people, just to name a few. Animal abuse is integral to the idea that the world and all of its contents are here solely for human consumption, rather than seeing humans as part of the world and working with the world rather than having the world work for humans. When white people came to America, for example, we brought our sense of entitlement. We stole the land and divided it up and made profit off of it. We forced our way of living and inflicted violence on the native people who were living on the lands that we stole. And finally, we took for granted the lives of animals and started seeing their lives as irrelevant and using non-human animals as objects for our consumption rather than our fellow animals. We continue these practices today. We buy and sell land, which doesn't inherently belong to us. We use marginalized groups as workers, including non-human animals. And we continue to see non-human animals as objects meant for us to raise, kill, and eat, rather than as living creatures with as much right to life as we have. And this seems acceptable to most people, because it is how it's been, 
and will possibly always be if we don't start realizing how damaging and messed up it actually is. I think one of the reasons that animal justice is not taken as an obligate part of feminism or other social justice movements is that it challenges us to extend our empathy outside of ourselves. With oppression against other groups of human animals, we can more easily place ourselves in their position as we can connect with them as another human animal and see their situation as something that could or could have happened to us too. With speciesism, however, human animals are seen as separate and fundamentally different from non-human animals, so it can be harder to relate to their struggle as we are not taught to see human animals and non-human animals as sharing things in common with one another, despite having more similarities than differences. I believe that if people can extend their empathy and compassion to animals and wake up to the larger impact that their animal consumption has on the earth and everything on it, it may be easier to see the connections between non-human animal oppressions and human animal oppressions. When we become aware and consciously work against the violence and cruelty we so easily accept for non-human animals, perhaps our awareness of the violence against other minority groups will become more glaringly obvious and harder to ignore. When we can call ourselves animal lovers and not justify their consumption, maybe we can call ourselves allies and not justify their discriminations and death as something that they did, and rather a flaw in the society.